muted for the whole time sorry about it <laughs> and you haven't missed much so <laughs> so my name is dan uh, I, i'm an uh, uh an engineer at red hat uh, dealing with messaging iot and edge computing for the for the last number of years and uh, today uh with my uh colleague hugo who is, a, who is a developer advocate and uh, dealing with the APIs and mess messaging. Uh, uh, we are going to talk about uh, IoT and edge computing and event-driven architectures, how we can apply, apply it uh, to solve the challenges uh, in, in, in those spaces, what uh, Apache uh, projects can be used and, and uh, how those are being uh, being uh, used specifically for for IoT and Edge. So, let's start uh, from from the beginning. Uh, what do we mean when we say uh, IoT and and uh, Edge systems. So basically, when you talk with the different people, everybody have a, a different uh, di different term on what Edge is. Starting from the left to right uh, on this diagram, we, we try to summarize a, a lot of these. So we have a traditional uh, core data center, and then edge to that could be a regional data center. Or uh, going going forward, we, we have a, a so-called uh, provider edge, where we have a lot of telcos, ISPs, and, and people have, having a lot of, uh, lot, lot of uh, infrastructure all over the place uh, trying to provide edge computing services and then uh, we are also getting in into the end user premises and that's usually our manufacturing retail uh, or, or or office environments uh, where we people also want to deploy uh, edge, edge computing computing software and beyond this scale is our the devices and sensors uh, trying to provide a uh, uh, connectivity to, to, to these uh, to this edge infrastructure is is what we're trying to, to, to deal with so no, no matter how you, you look at it uh, there's a lot of lot of infrastructure going on here and uh, uh, all the all the services that we try to put in our core cloud uh, in our uh, you know, manufacturing uh, retail edge or on our devices, we're trying to, to solve a, a lot of uh, integration uh, integration problems and, and distributed computing problems. We, we can say that that we are basically we are basically uh, 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 pushing the the integration problems uh, uh, to to its limit, and that's where where. The event-driven architecture is basically a, a proven solution for, for most of these problems. And now I will try to get to Hugo to try to get us through the through the event-driven architecture basics. Thank you, Dayan. That's uh, very nice to be with you and be able to share uh, some information on this uh, topic. So um, event-driven architecture, what is important? Because it mirrors real world, right? We need to have 
this option to be able to uh, communicate and connect our applications from IoT or in the data center and being able to decouple them in a way um, that they are not need to be present at the same time. So that's why we create an uh, event driven architecture. This pattern that allows us to have applications and services are able to uh, respond almost in, in real time. So instead of being polling, we can actually receive uh, events and being able to take actions uh, on, on those uh, events and those notifications. If we go to the next slide, uh, we, we can see what we are talking when we are saying events, right? The event is most of the times we are uh, associating events with the uh, actual notification that it's being uh, sent for, for, from the systems, right? But most of the times the event is something that changes and happens inside the system. It's most of the times a change of a state. And then that change of a state or that action that has been that has been occurring in the system, it's the one that is generating a notification or a message to uh, to uh, share with the rest of the components of the architecture that this happened and, and what happened, right? So the events, most of the times, even though it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, related with the notification, is what happened in, in the system. So that's why it's important to take a look in the different type of events that then happen. So if we go to the next slide, we can see that we have found like three different types of events. The but the notification that was most of the times called the event is where you have this um, change in the state that you want to communicate uh, that. And, and that message or that notification, it's immutable. It's uh, it, there is there will be no change in the system. And most of the times it's just a way to notify the rest of the companies that something has occurred. The second type of uh, of events that we can find is the one that are actually asking or these messages or a communication that we want to have is to ask the system to do a change in, in the state, right? So what's most of the times we associate with comments when we are actually trying to do a remote call or uh, or, or are trying to um, set in and execute a uh, comment to the uh, to the system. And then there's the third type of event that we have found that we are usually tend to use in, in, in this IoT and edge space is the uh, the queries. The queries are similar to the comments, but uh, we don't expect change in the state. We actually just want to retrieve the uh, actual status of the of the, uh, of the system and, and what is the uh, the current representation. So most of the times those uh, those queries will just return the actual state. And, but still, we need to have this connectivity and be able to transfer the information. And that's why, if we go to the next slide, there's the uh, type of consumption patterns. So when you are talking about this kind of, uh, of events and, and the type of uh, notification that are flowing in the system, uh, we can have different type of consumption patterns for those events and, and for those messages. And in the first time, for example, it's a very good case for the IoT space, where we're talking about the volatile events. Those events that can be uh, then does not need persistent, and that's kind of uh, depends that the consumers uh, most of the times require to be online to be able to be processed or, or to be handled. So what happens is when you have, for example, an IoT device that it's sensing the uh, room temperature of uh, of of a room. And then uh, you want to get information regarding the average temperature, so you can, you know, do some uh, access or change in, the, in in a PLC, or perhaps just getting the uh, information um, on on analytics and being able to process that. So sometimes when you are having a device that is sending perhaps the measurement every uh, five seconds or thirty seconds or, or very frequently, and what you are actually interested into is just the average temperature for the last like six hours or twelve hours. Sometimes when you are uh, having a, a a message that is being lost or is won't affect that much the uh, the actual uh, result that you are uh, waiting for. The other case is where you actually need to have the other service being available at the same time, and if the service is not available, then perhaps the uh, message or this event really to that event can be discarded because it won't be able to be attended by by anyone. So that's the kind of uh, events that you can find in the uh, volatile space. Then there's the second type of events, the what we call the durable events. The durable events, it's what most of the time we found in traditional store and forward brokers, so the message oriented middleware, where we have actual uh, component in the system that it's taking ownership of the uh, of the events, and then we'll we'll keep those events, we'll make them persistent if required. 
until the uh, actual um, destination it's it's available and it's been able to deliver those uh, those events to that uh, destination or to the actual consumer that is interested in those events most of the times is uh, traditional uh, gms type of approach for for a broker when you will uh, register as a consumer and say you i'm interested in this queue or this topic to listen for the events and then the uh, broker will uh, take the ownership of, of, of that subscription or, or that consumer and then we'll be able to deliver the messages uh, to those consumers uh, uh, until they are able to consume those uh, those events and then it, it just discards those events and that's why uh, the last point of discarding the events uh, make the uh, the creation or lead to the creation of the third type of consumption patterns what we call the replayable events. In the case of replayable events, it's actually a subgroup uh, of the durable events when we still have a broker that is taking ownership of the messages. But one uh, specific change is where now the broker is able to store those messages for a determinate uh, time that is not associated with the uh, consumers or the, uh, or the different clients that are listening to those events or to those messages. So what does it mean that the, uh, the uh, broker takes ownership of, of, of the events and they can then keep those events and then allow the consumers to be able to get and then ask for events that may have been occurred in the past or even that have been occurred uh, even before the uh, consumer has been created or has been subscribed to the uh, with a broker. And it's not only that that capability that has uh, uh, that is available and replayable, but all those consumers that can move um, forward and backward uh, uh, reading those uh, streams of events. So that means that it's not able to just read from the past, but if it needs to, they can reread the messages that they have already received. And this opens a whole new set of capabilities for applications to be able to use those benefits to be able to uh, to read the events that are happening and flowing through the system. Obviously, there's some drawbacks for those kind of approaches, but well, it, it's a, a, a different capability available now. So we go to the next slide. We can talk then about the different projects on the uh, on the Apache landscape that are addressing this type of consumption. Right? We we go over what is event-driven architecture important, and then we have talk about why is the uh, the uh, the different type of consumptions. And for that, obviously, we certainly need a specific software. So we go to the next slide, we can see the first uh, L, the first project from the Apache Foundation that addresses mainly the, um, uh, the replayable events. And this one, it's Apache Kafka. So Apache Kafka is this um, project that was uh, created and designed in LinkedIn that has been uh, donated to the Apache Foundation. And it's uh, very well um, engineered to handle replayability. It uh, also, in the dog, not also just uh, deals with uh, replayability, but also, it tries to address uh, scalability and and, and and distribution and of this uh, of this component. So it's uh, very well designed for handle uh, streams. It's this uh, distributed commit log that allows us to have a stream processing applications and being also able to handle microservices in in a large scale. If we go to the next slide. We can see that uh, Apache Kafka is not just the core broker that we can have in the in the project. And, and with the producer APIs, consumer APIs, admin APIs, and management tools, but it's also, it's growing in, and it's even having a, a whole ecosystem that is getting all the benefits from, from its design. Like for example, when having a Kafka Connect API or uh, for doing the connectivity between uh, different systems and, and, and Kafka as, as the broker, uh, but it also has a, a streams API that allows you to do this processing with a very simple APIs to be able to uh, to access the uh, uh, the broker, the different topics that are available in, in in the system, and then being able to consume those. And well, other uh, tools like mirror mission to other clusters, and in the case of IoT and, and Edge, there's also uh, components uh, for clients that are not available to. Uh, use the uh, the Kafka clients because Kafka is using a, a binary uh, a protocol. Uh, they can you can add uh, or throw components like the uh, uh, REST proxy or HTTP bridge to be able to then uh, access the uh, the components from any HTTP client. 
this is the, the first one. If we go to the next slide, we can see the other project, other project that it's uh, specialized, for example, in the volatile events. So under the Apache Cupid project, there's this component, the dispatch router, that it's a um, brokerless uh, MQP native uh, message router that specializes in uh, delivering messages over a wide array network or without uh, or creating a very complex topologies uh, uh, using a, a network focused approach. So uh, Apache Cupid project allows you to create uh, this uh, distributed network that has a distributed that has a distributed embedded control plane that allows you to be able to uh, uh, deploy the routers in uh, in different locations and then being able to connect them in a secure way and then being able to transfer and, and, and connect events and connections through those routers. So it can uh, be used uh, in a brokerless manner, just using the router to deliver the, uh, the messages, or it can be used uh, in, in conjunction with another broker that also can speak MQP or has an MQP adapter to be able to then have a, a, a buffer where you can do persistence of, of, of events and then be able to deliver those. And one of the benefits of this kind of approach is that uh, the dispatch router allows you to have communication directly between uh, consumers one-to-one -one with what they call the direct links, or you can uh, also have uh, other uh, distribution patterns or destination patterns like one-to-many, what we call traditional broadcast or, or multicast. So it's a very way, uh, it's a very good way to have uh, this uh, high performance direct messaging approach. The next element is uh, the traditional broker that we can find in uh, in projects like, for example, ActiveMQ. Uh, in the case of ActiveMQ Classic or Artemis, uh, we have uh, this uh, fully featured message oriented middleware uh, broker. It's um, it's uh, in the case of ActiveMQ, it's an, uh, a Java implementation with a very high performance broker that has a, a very high throughput with the different implementation. It's uh, flexible and you can use it either uh, using a journal or using a database we want to the persistence. It allows you to have a different type of uh, topologies to deploy where you can have high availability using a shared storage or, or, or using just a network replication. And the uh, one of the, the interesting things about the ActiveMQ broker in, in the case of Artem is that it also has a lot of set of protocols available out of the box uh, to uh, to connect to these brokers, right? You can use uh, MQP like, and, and then have MQP clients or, or you can do a Cupid uh, dispatch router to connect to this or we can use MQP, MQTT or stop or the um, of the proprietary of the or, or the proper um, open wire hard at you protocols that are also compatible with uh, with this broker. And for all those comp all those connectors and all those protocols, there's uh, plenty of, of uh, clients that you can use uh, in, in different languages to connect to these kind of, of brokers have been in the in the market for a long time and this is a very old and stable project. We can go to the next slide. We can then see how we can relate, for example, these three um, quick projects into the consumption patterns. As we can see, most of those uh, of those projects can work together or one can work alone and then be able to address uh, the different consumption patterns. So in this table, we try to summarize those kind of interactions. So you will see that there's uh, projects and components that are more, that are a best fit for different consumption patterns. And there are some consumption patterns that perhaps they're not suitable or not the best way to uh, implement those using these components. So in the case of the uh, traditional brokers, they're very good to do uh, durable events and 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 it's the, the the main their main focus but however it's sometimes complicated to implement uh replayable uh events consumption patterns with this kind of solutions in the case of the uh dispatch router for example it's very good to have a uh, command and query type of events also volatile events but it's uh it, because it's of implement patterns like durable events, you will need certainly another company to be able to store the messages. And in the case of Kafka, you uh, are able to uh, have a very good fit for replayable events or durable events. But if you need something like, for example, uh, distributed transaction, or um, do you want to manage your events or your communication and, and, and uh, like um, doing filtering or doing 
uh, sometimes just uh, a content rate based routing or adding just additional protocols. Well, it's not it's not the best suit for for this kind of solution. So you can see that there's plenty of, of projects available under the Apache ecosystem to be able to target your different uh, needs and requirements in, in the event space. Dan, can you tell us a little bit more about the use cases that then we can address and target with uh, these components? Absolutely. So now we have the basis. We, we, we know what we can do with, with event-driven architectures and, and we know the basics of the, of, of the, of the uh, basic, uh, foundation so so to say components that, that we can use but let, let's now focus on, on a couple of, of use cases and challenges that we need to solve in, in in the iot and edge computing use cases and and see how we can actually apply some of these uh, techniques and pro projects to them so for example first thing we can talk about is is edge networking and and what are we trying to to solve solve here in in, in a traditional uh, uh, in, in, a, in a typical uh, edge computing use case, you have a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, microservices running in, in a lot of different uh, uh, different uh, networks, right? So some of these will be uh, in the cloud, some will be in, in the local, you know, uh, office building, some will be at your tel telco providers, and there's no way we can address these. These services, uh, these services that directly as we are when they're running all in the in a in a in a centralized uh, cloud uh, cloud computing environment, right? So th the first solution uh, people apply to this problem is is to deal with this problem on on the networking le level, right? So we don't uh, let's create all uh, uh, the VPNs to all the all the edge locations, so so we can we can punch holes through the firewalls and and, and let, let people uh, access physically uh, these uh, these uh, private networks and then uh, let's add uh, uh, net layers to to be able to to translate addresses between them then let's uh, do addressing using the the dns uh, layer so so we can actually uh, uh, address uh, uh, address our services uh, properly but what if we rethink this problem a little bit and, and try try to solve it on, 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 a, on a different way. Uh, as Hugo explained in the previous slide, so the Cupid dispatch router is not a, 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 a typical broker messaging component that, that we all always associate messaging with, right? It's a it's a it's a it's a router, right? So and it, it works in a similar principle as an IP router, but on, on a different level, on, on the on the layer seven, uh, and on, on the AMQP level, right? So, so maybe we can we can try to solve all, all this problem on, on, on that level. And this is this diagram on, on this slide actually try, tries to, to, to show show this. So basically, here we have a, a, a cloud, uh, and we have two two edge nodes. And what what we what we don't want to do is to actually dial in to the edge. We always want for for our edges to to you know call out to the cloud uh, on a physical network layer right and we can do that so so we can set up set up a router mesh that basically does that so you have a one central router in the cloud and and uh, and, and the dispatch router in each of, of the edge nodes and then the the edge routers will, will call in and, and and establish establish a physical tcp connection to the cloud right so we don't need, need the vpn anymore because nobody needs to dial in uh, to, to the edge site anymore but once we have this uh, this uh, network mesh uh, established, uh, it, it's it's it, uh, we have basically an overlayer, overlaid layer seven network uh, established, and our services can communicate. Uh, so so the the, the service uh, A can can call out service C without even knowing uh, its location, right? So so it, it will all be. Uh, transparently done through, through the through the AMQP overlay network and 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 using using the the dispatch routers. So even if if our uh, so to say uh, uh, networking connections are, are one way from the edge to the cloud, once it's established, we, we can do we can do whatever we want. And what else we can do is, uh, uh, is that we can do actually addressing on the layer seven. So we can address the services by their service names. For example, and and not trying to to resolve 
uh, host names and and and, uh, and and things like that in order to to reach out to, to our services. But do do it more on the on on the on 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 the on the application level. Do security on the application level. Do monitoring and observability on on the on the application level as well. So to actually do this, uh, uh, Red Hat started a, a scupper project, which is which is an idea is to use a, a Cupid dispatch router and and try to 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 apply it to to, to this domain. So so basically, uh, pro provide all the tooling we need to to actually. Uh, provide these uh, router meshes, right, and and, and establish uh, connections between them, and then provide a lot of uh, a lot of pro proxies to say so, so that that we can expose our services from different environments uh, and environments over over this network. So if you take a, a, a this diagram, so Kubernetes is 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 a, a, is a poster child for this. So so you know. We can always talk about edge computing, but but we can talk about uh, uh, multi multi hybrid cloud environments as well, because those are in in some use cases uh, interchangeable terms, right? So if we have a multiple uh, Kubernetes clusters, we can use Scupper to easily uh, provide uh, using the 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 custom resource definitions and and and, and easily create this uh, this uh, AMQP network. Uh, 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 crossing overlaying multiple multiple clusters and then uh, what scupper does is is that actually it can expose a service a kubernetes service uh, defined in in one uh, namespace in one cluster showing up uh, logically uh, virtually basically in 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 other kubernetes cluster what will happen underneath is that uh, scupper uh, provides also a lot of uh, a lot of uh, proxies for different different protocols so that, for example, your HTTP service uh, uh, from from one cluster will show up as as a, as a HTTP service in another cluster, and when someone calls that that HTTP service, the proxy will get the HTTP request, uh, uh, put it into the MQP message, send it over over the the, the router network, find appropriate uh, uh, consumer of that service, right? Execute that service and do the, the same. Uh, on, on the round round trip back and, and get the response back to the ori original original caller. So basically, we, we can say see that that you know in, in these kind of use cases, Copper allows us a lot of uh, uh, a lot of operational ease. So there's no need. To, so it's it's very easy to 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 deploy it in a multi cluster network. No need for advanced networking. So uh, VPNs and, and those kind of things. There's no even no need for ad, ad, uh, elevated privileges on the cluster because everything is on, on the on the, on the uh, application uh, application level. And we can we can have a we, we can have a redundant topology because Cupid dispatch routers provides. Uh, pr provides a way to to, to provide a, a, a multiple routes between uh, uh, between them. Uh, that's one use case for 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 a typical uh, uh, edge computing. Uh, we can also talk about how these Apache projects play a role in in solving the other problem. This is the this is the pure uh, IoT use case, uh, trying to connect uh, devices directly to the uh, to the cloud. And Eclipse Hono project is is providing uh, uh, that kind of system, uh, something what what we can call an IoT cloud gateway. And the idea is that uh, you know you're all here because you're in a, in an IoT session. So if you if you play with with IoT devices at all, you you, you know that on the field side of of, of the IoT devices that there's a zoo there, and there's a lot of different protocols, a lot of different ways to use those protocols. So the, the idea of our IoT gateway is to provide a uniform access of all th those different devices, and and do the security, uh, and and then normalize this traffic coming and going uh, to the devices uh, for the for the IoT uh, IoT cloud solutions. So that's that's what uh, what Eclipse Hono tries to do, and in addition, it tries tries to do it in a in a cloud scale way, so that, that you have a multi tenant system that that can. Scale to you know uh, uh, millions of, of devices. So how this work, working in practice is that uh, 
is that uh, Ahono provides a, a, a components that, that, that are called protocol adapters. And those protocol adapters are basically uh, trying to, to, to deal with the, with the device protocols and, and get them, uh, get them back to the, to, to, to the, to the, uh, to the, uh, applications. And in, in this case, we can see how we send a simple telemetry. And, and as, as Hugo gave a, an example, telemetry is a typical volatile event. Uh, coming from the device, right? Like uh, temperatures readings, right? So the device will will post a telemetry protocol adapter will, will create a, a appropriate AMQP message here, uh, and uh, uh, Kafka is coming soon. But we'll talk about that in, in in a minute, and and it will be it will be delivered uh, to the application. Uh, the more the more uh, interesting use case is is the command and control. Where we, we you know we need to deal with with the specificity of of uh, uh, IoT devices that sometimes are, are low low powered, usually sleeps a lot and and then wake up uh, from time to time and and then you know try to do some work so try to send some telemetry and 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 receive some commands and for for those devices uh, we, we have a system in, in the IoT it's usually it's usually uh, established a system to do some kind of a long polling for these kind of things so so the device will, will send some uh, post and define the TTD uh, the time uh, until disconnect and in this case like uh, device is say, saying to the system I will be online for the next uh, 30 seconds right and that that will get through the system to, to the app appropriate application again uh, uh, similarly to the AMQP or, or the Kafka Kafka message and in the reply uh, reply the, the application will say okay let, let me see if, if I, I have all my commands uh, for for the, this device to deliver and it will deliver it to the protocol adapter which will convert those commands back uh, to the to the device through the uh, to, to the uh, appropriate uh, response headers and, and res response body. So why is this important is, is that uh, we, we can see that we will try to, to do as little as little uh, state as possible in, in, in this. And, and this is to provide this scalability of, of, of the, this uh, gateway layer of, 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 our, of our cloud. So, these commands are, are now uh, usually the, the the volatile events uh, again because you know we don't want anything to be stored stored here the uh, application some kind of digital twin living behind the, the gateway uh, should should deal 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 with the state and this is uh, the the architecture of Eclipse Hono so we, we discussed a little bit about the the, the various uh, protocol adapters that 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 needs to to, to deal with the with different devices. One more uh, 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 important component here is is the device registry, which which handles the security, authentication, and, and uh, authorization of the devices. And uh, we want to do that no matter the the uh, what kind of uh, uh, messaging solution we are, we are using behind behind this, because we want to do security uh, uh, based on on the on the on the device and the identities and, and not the usernames and, and uh, addresses or, 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 or topics or, or, or anything like that. So people de developing IoT solution want to have their security uh, uh, defined in terms of devices, their credentials and, 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 and what we can do with, with those. But as, as you can see, this orange, orange, uh, orange uh, uh, squares are, are uh, HONO specific components behind behind it we have a some kind of general purpose eventing or messaging messaging solution so today that's a dispatch router and artemis so dispatch router handling the the volatile part of of, of eventing going between the 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 the, the devices and, and the solutions and the artemis in that case in uh, storing and doing the story forward for for uh, for uh, event types that that needs that and uh, in in the future uh, and very soon uh, there's 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 coming the the kafka uh, 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 alternative to this as well so that people can choose uh, choose which uh, which kind of combination of these things are best suited for for their their particular particular deployment so that's what we had to share with, with you today, and, and I think you know a couple of uh, a, a couple of key takeaways. I, I think 
uh, we would like to, to, to for you to take from this session is that uh, there's no silver bullet uh, solution to to all the problems like like there's never uh, is in in engineering right everything is some kind of the trade off but the, the good thing is is that apache foundation has a lot of tools and and uh, in, in the toolbox and and uh, and as we can see like combining these tools we can we can have a, a very very versatile platforms so so you can pick and choose and 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 find the best solution for the for the particular uh, you're solving and and even if if you have all these tools uh trying to solve a, a single use case uh, uh is not something that uh, requires some more, more additional thinking and, and work like like uh, uh trying to solve the, the edge networking with Scupper or, or trying to, to solve uh, uh, device connectivity with Hono. So, and we can build uh, those specialized tools on the, this uh, good foundation that, that, are we, uh, that, that are coming from, from the Kafka, ActiveMQ, and, and, and the Cupid uh, dispatch router. So, thanks, Hugo. Do you have anything else to add for the, for the end? No, I think you summarized it very well. The idea is just to present some of the uh, different components that are currently available out of the box to be able to be used, and also show you that there's uh, there's if, in, if there's a specific need or a niche solution that needs to be implemented, sometimes we don't need to push all those requests or all those features into the actual components. You can create uh, top of projects on, uh, using those components and, as foundation, as, as Daya mentioned, and they've been able to build on top of that more specialized solutions or solutions that are addressing specific problems or different problems, but benefiting from the uh, from the underlying components. So that's why. In the case of IoT and Edge, you can still use the connectivity components, but also there's a, another layer like a Hono or Scupper that allows you to then deal with the specifics on, on this. Um, it allows you to have all these uh, general purpose type of messaging components, and but repurpose them to be able to connect and solve IoT and, and Edge use cases. So thank you very much for, for your time. We really appreciate and we're open for any question that it might rise in the uh, in the chat, or uh, if you want to add any other comments, we're um, we're available on Twitter, so you can follow the conversation, and and, and we can um, yeah. If you're interested in this, feel free to, to to reach us. Yeah. Right. I also add some uh, links in the chat, so if you want to follow scopper.io, it's the uh, web page for Scopper project, and there's the uh, GitHub uh, link for Eclipse Hono. We also want to take a look at that project. Uh, well, I'm not uh, familiar with the stream pipes, uh, so I would need to check that, and maybe we can we can get this offline. Who I don't know if if, if you have an answer to this. Um, no, I, I'm not familiar with stream pipes either. But uh, if it is a, uh, it's a way to have a TCP connection, then uh, Scopper is able to reroute uh, that stream, that uh, TCP connection on, on top of the networking. But yeah, we, we can take a look at that one. Okay, if if it using if you're using uh, services on top of Kubernetes. Then uh, Scopper works with that because it uh, it uses the abstraction on top of the uh, Kubernetes services and then allows you to do the uh, plumbing and the connection underneath that with the uh, with the uh, QP dispatch routers. So it might it might it might work, yeah. Yes, right. It, it should be a, if it is uh, benefiting from services that can expose a TCP connection. That is copper. It will work with with that because so, it's handling that. So, so what, one of the efforts that, that we are trying to do in the in the Hono land is is to to make it more uh, edge computing friendly, meaning that we we want to tr to try uh, uh, to to uh, you know uh, being able to to uh, deploy. The protocol adapters outside of the of the main cluster, basically, and on, and on the edge. And for that, uh, the, the scupper is also also a solution. So so basically, devices will connect locally uh, uh, to the edge node, and and the MQP network can stream. Basically, uh, the, the the scupper can can stream stream either MQP 
or or any other TCP protocol back back to the cloud. But I'll I'll, I'll take a deeper look in, in, into the into the uh, stream pipes for sure. So thanks for for the reference. Thank you, folks, for, for, for joining us. As you said, we'll be around uh, Hugo probably more today because it's 9 p.m. here. Uh, but reach us uh, on, the, on the Slack, reach us on the Twitter. Uh, I'd love to talk about these, uh, these topics anytime. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.